Hello, this is Philip Brooks from Back with Brooks Knives. And my brother recently got a Sky CPX2. So we'll do a safety check. The magazine is unloaded. And it is unloaded. So he asked me to make a holster for it. And I've kept refining my, the, not refining, refining my techniques or my methods of making a holster for over the course of making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think about seven holsters so far and half of them coming from this chunk of leather actually. So what I do is I lay, um, lay the gun down <clears throat> since this is going to be a right-handed holster. I'm marking on the suede side, which will be the side close to your body, because the, the skin side, it gets really sticky if you don't have anything uh, like an undershirt or something on. And it's not comfortable, so if you go with the suede side, it's nice and smooth and soft, and it, even if it gets wet, it stays nice and smooth and soft, um, and it's fine. And it's also technically better to have the skin side resting on your gun rather than the suede side because the suede side will hold water better and the skin side repels it better. So <clears throat> if you keep it nice and good and oiled on the inside, it'll it probably, I mean, pretty much protect your gun from moisture but not quite. It's it's not going to be Kydex. It's not going to be uh, some sort of a hydrophobic material. It will take on water, so you still have to maintain your gun. Regardless, I set it out, <clears throat> and I just marked all the way around it. And with the size of this gun, it's going to come out kind of squarish. And that's fine. That's the way it's going to have to be. So, I've already got a, a score line in here. So, I'm going to cut this out and bring you back um, to see the second part of cutting this out. Where we'll find a nice, nice piece around here, probably up in here. And I'll show you how we're going to cut out this, this second side. Because we're going to do something a little bit interesting with it. Because of the way this gun is going to be very top heavy. So this is a 10 round magazine and 10 rounds might not seem a lot a nine millimeter, especially now when you have a lot of guns that are slightly smaller than this gun coming out with 11 rounds in the magazine, looking like the Springfield Armory Hellcat. It's smaller than this in overall profile and form, but it's got 11 rounds in the magazine. So, <clears throat> while this is, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't hold as much as a Hellcat. The Hellcat is a little bit smaller, and it doesn't have quite a big a problem as this, in that the way this sets, there's hardly any material up here, and there's a lot of weight back here. So, what I'm worried about is, say, you fall over. And if you come down like this, all that weight might pull the gun out. So what I'm going to be doing is since the paddle side comes up all the way to the back to prevent this from gouging into your, into your side, I'm going to carry the other side up all the way up here as well. So it's going to pancake like this right around here. So this is going to be what is covered. And then you'll have enough room to grab on and pull. So I'll get cutting and we'll come back to you. Okay, so there's that. The gun will actually set in like this. <clears throat> And there will be um, 
belt slots right here and here and holes for um, clips to, to go inside the waistband which I'll show you how to how to make those here as well or at least how I do so now since this is the way this is going to set we're going to want to cut out since this will be what's showing on the front we're going to cut everything out with skin side up <clears throat> so we're going to just find a place that'll work and this is probably going to work just fine so i'm going to take a a pencil and make as good a marking as I can around here. <clears throat> then I'm going to lay the gun on top and mark where the handle comes out. So we'll cut all the way around there. So let me see if you can see that line well enough. Oh, yeah, you can. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lay the gun down. We're going to now trace where we want leather to come. So that's going to go right there. I'm going to want it to come up like that and then up straight. So we're going to come down like this. Just like that. <clears throat> now, I'll cut this one out, and we will lay them together to where you can see how it looks. Okay, and there is the piece cut out. I'm going to add an extra piece of 2-ounce leather to this 9-ounce to help make this firmer, which will prevent things like a, a little bump from getting in and catching the trigger. So, and it makes it a little bit, it makes it kind of cool. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do right now is we're going to get this all prepped to get stitching all the way around it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a container of contact cement. We're just going to coat this. <clears throat> this leather will absorb a lot of this, so you got to put it on generously. If you can hear music in the background, my brother's lifting right now, so he's got some Sabaton on. It's a great band, great songs. You just see how the moment I put this stuff on, it just soaks right into that leather. Okay, so what we're going to do is, now that we've got this coated, we're going to have to coat this side. So the way to tell where you need to put glue is to stick this, peel it right off, and now you have a glue mark that you can follow. See that? <clears throat> so we just got to glue up right there. Now, you don't have to glue leather work because the stitching is usually sturdy enough, if you do it right, to hold everything together. What glue allows you to do, though, is to make something 
so much sturdier that you don't have to rely on stitches. It almost becomes like there are certain things that I have glued with leather, uh, or that uh, I have glued with the contact cement that's leather, that it just has glue on it. There's no stitching whatsoever. So just set that right down there. Clean your fingers off a little bit. And then just press that in. Now, this, once it's dry, would probably stay right where I put it. But, for the sake of good looks, we're going to use punches. This is one of my, this is the biggest one that I have. This is a six, six hole punch for la uh, lacing punch, I think they're called. And they come in all different sizes. There's one, there's a two, and then there's a four and a six. So what we're gonna do is we'll use a combination of these because each of them will have different, like this two prong one will go much better around this. So. And the other nice thing about this stuff is it dries really fast. So. <clears throat> Cool. Well, I'm going to um, punch a bunch of holes in this and get it laced, and I'll show you how I did that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to leave some room here for one trimming and two for the external uh, lacing, and also with sabaton on, I don't want to get copyright strike, but okay. Okay. So I just found a problem with this that I had not been thinking about, but I need a belt loop right there. So that is a problem. It's not a big problem because all I have to do is cut through there and then <clears throat> clean up the stitching on the back side. Um, but it's still kind of a problem, so just remember to think about stuff like that. That's, this is a little bit, uh, a little bit different from the other ones that I've made. So it wasn't too hard to get off track. So what we're going to do the next for the next part here <clears throat> is we need to stitch around the perimeter. And the reason for that is because we need to wet form this. And the easiest way to wet form this is going to be with the gun in the holster with that periphery stitched up to where we can then start pressing with our hands and if we have clamps around, we can clamp this and make it all sink right in to where then we can come in and punch holes so that the gun then rides in one spot. So we're going to start that process. I'm going to <clears throat> excuse me, line everything up as well as I can. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here, come in about a quarter inch, and stick that in there. You see how it doesn't go all the way through because of this thick leather. <clears throat> I got to do this. Another thing that I forgot to do is give that a curve on it. That's not too bad. Bingo, it's done. 
So while this is hooked right there, now I can come in with another punch, line everything up. and give that a punch. And now if I pull this out, I can maintain <clears throat> maintain the the positioning of this if I stitch a quick little stitch in here with say like this. If I just do an under over under over stitch I can keep this in one spot as I stitch around the rest of the thing and it helps to have everything aligned come on check in there <clears throat> I'm just going to tie a really light jam knot. Something that's going to be easy to get out. Because we're not looking to, to stitch this up permanently. We're just looking to make sure it doesn't go all over the place as we're trying to go around and punch more holes. So there it's got a little bit of side to side motion restricted. So we're gonna line it up. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Let me just take this right off the bat. Now, here's a good use for some of the scraps that you get while stitching. So I'm just going to loop this through like a normal normal needle this time around. that through <clears throat> and with this one since it's a scrap we'll just tie a square knot we'll cut it out and we go and stitch around the periphery okay and now the holster doesn't move side to side very much now it's coming coming around here <clears throat> 
you want to go from each side just because you started um, on both sides instead of starting on one side and then just taking it all the way around because these are all they're all a predetermined size apart from each other so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to about here doing standard sizing and from here to about here doing standard sizing and then in this this area here I'm just going to start using the two prong punch and just guesstimating sizes away from each other and I might end up using the single punch to just take up all the room that needs to be taken up and make sure that the lacing continues to stay even although it might be a little bit wonky as far as to the specific spacing as say like on this <clears throat> so I'll get that done and get back to you okie dokie so I got this soaking with water you can see some of that water trickling there and what we're going to do is we're just going to being that this is a stainless and polymer gun don't have to worry about it rusting if we take it out fairly soon here we're just going to mash it down in there <clears throat> find out where we're going to want our cant which will be like right there and there so it'll sit like that. Shove it in until we get a good, good point down there. And then just press, and stretch, and mold everything around the gun. See, that's just forming right around there. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Now, I'm going to probably run another line of stitch right there, just to make this a little bit nicer. But it'll go right next to this other stitch right here. Then it's going to come around, come all the way up there, go all the way there, come all the way here, from here, all the way down, and I'll get a run across here. And what I'll end up doing right here is I'll straddle. So I'll punch with uh, the double and the single to where I get a punch on either side of one of these holes in here, right there. And then I can stitch through that hole as I continue to go around making more holes. <clears throat> so that's how we'll work that. So once, once we have this all pinched down, I'm going to take my snap setter and I'm going to run a mark all the way around the perimeter and mark where I want to put my second set of stitches. So I'll go like that. And I'll just run right at the edge of that 
around these spots right here just to where as you pinch and you sew it'll shrink up really nice and then this just dry it off a little bit and let it sit in there dry and it should be fine Now, the difficult part right now is this is going to have to remain wet. And this punch does not like going through leather that is wet. Or, well, it goes right through, but coming out is a, is a major problem. So that's actually going to reduce me to using the two-prong punch as the biggest punch I can use here. Which is going to be fine because I'm going to just start right out and start right in. <clears throat> so, I will do this. Let me see how hard this is to pull out, even with the two prong. <sighs> Get your butt out of there. Ah, come on. Might be doing this with a single punch. Ah. <coughs> okay, well, I will spend my time with that single punch and I will go all the way around this perimeter and stitch it back up uh, because then we're going to come back and hopefully this will still be wet enough. If not, I will re wet it and we are going to stick the gun in here and let it sit for about an hour and a half, two hours to let it dry up just a bit before we start marking out and cutting holes for uh, belt loops and marking out where the holes for the belt clips that we're going to make for this will go. <clears throat> but after I get this stitched up, that'll be the last stitching that I'll have to do, except for maybe cleaning up parts around here um, where I ridiculously put a whole crap ton of stitching and didn't realize that I shouldn't have put it there. But regardless, I will get cracking on that. Okay, there we go. So, there we go. Now it's in frame. So now all we got to do is wait for this to dry out a little bit. It's still pretty sticky. But uh, it will come out. <clears throat> and we'll go back in. And just at this time, it is sticky. Get in and out because it is still wet. So we're just going to leave it like this for a little bit. And then I'm going to take the gun out of there to where it can continue to dry. And then it should hold everything quite nicely. And in the interim, <clears throat> while that is drying, we're going to make a little case for, a mag for the spare magazine to where you can carry it in a pocket. So basically all we need to do here is make sure it's a frame i'm gonna take i'm gonna take the little tool again and i'm going to mark out where this is what am i doing got to go over to the side. I don't need to mark the one side. Oh, it can be so goofy sometimes. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm just going to come up. And 
trying to make a a simple dome at the top here. Try to get a nicer curve in there. There we go. It's a little bit better. <coughs> Now we cut this out and then get a chunk of light leather. In this case, some more of our two ounce leather to just fit over top of this. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll stitch up both sides first. We'll stitch down both sides and then we'll cut and pucker the end, stitch that down to do that. And then there will be a hole, two holes up here that will then hold a clip that will uh, clip into the pocket. <clears throat> so that will be super simple and I'll be back later. These are two chunks of car spring that I don't really want to touch too much except for with my fingernail because they're still hot. And they have been thinned down, drawn out. They're around seven, eight inches. Uh, so there will be stuff that we need to cut off. And I'm going to show you how to bend these uh, in a while and when I can grab onto them and they're not so hot to the touch because then we'll take them over and <clears throat> just get them bent right on a uh, chunk of two inch bar stock with a torch because then you can use you can use spot heat and it bends better if you heat it up in the forge you're going to get a, you're going to be able to bend it but the whole thing is going to be heated up and it's just a little bit difficult logistically to get everything to bend right. So a torch is just easier, it's faster, and it's more uh, precise. So uh, I also have another chunk that I need to forge a little bit out on. So this is a chunk that those came from, and it's a little bit too thick now. You can gauge the thickness from my thumb there. So I need to cut this down about another 50%. Eh, probably not 50%. Well, it, it'll just be, and I just need to hammer it some more. I forgot to do that while I was hammering out those. But um, I need to put that around probably a chunk like this. And I'll just wrap it around like this chunk here to make the clip for our magazine holster. So that'll have to happen as well. Um, and I'll be back when that's happening. <clears throat> This is going to be the short clip for the magazine holster. So what you want to do is you want to clamp your piece with the, the end that you want to be your clip about a finger height off of the bar on which you want for uh, the width of the actual clip itself. Then you're going to want to have a torch. just at the spot that you want it to bend. Try to be real careful with it to where you don't burn anything. Right there, good grief. Then you're just gonna dash it over. Give it a little bit more heat. Take an 
down our pair of pliers and turn the front part up. to take that clip face that we just formed and hook that right underneath our chunk of bending steel. So then that's going to be how big the clip is. And I'll get a, a larger two inch section for doing the actual pocket clips. So we'll turn our Back on. And we'll heat just in one spot. The nice thing about this one is it's on a longer, a longer uh, extra chunk where I can just bend it right over just like that. And now, since it's held right there, I can just take this. Bend it right down. There's the clip. I can seat that right down there to where there's just a very small amount of space, which will mean that when this gets clipped over a pocket, it'll actually hold on and grip the pocket. Bend it a tad more. And you can bend it while it's cooling. So like right there, there's just a very small amount of bend in there. Or there's a very small gap. So we come in here and clean everything up with uh, sandpaper to make it nice and smooth. And it should slip right over a pocket and hook in. And now all we'll have to do is figure out how long we want this. Drill two holes cut it off and clean everything up and that is literally all you have to do to make a pocket clip just find a chunk of steel the size that you want this clip section bend a about a finger height over bend a, a small tab of that back to form a hook and then just hook that bottom underneath Bend everything right over, and boom, all done. So I am going to do that to the next two. I'm going to drill some holes, and then we're going to come back and uh, finish up the holster. Turned off to save my remaining time, and thus the finished product. So we've got this. Um, uh, clip on a cant and that's that puts the actual holster to where it is lined up like that which gives it a forward cant and it keeps this part of the clip away from your fingers so if it was mounted right there being that we wanted a 2 inch clip it would be problematic so mounting it there gives it a cant and it allows for access to the pistol, which after a day or two of wearing it, um, my brother has worn it down enough that the pistol slides in and out quite easily. But when it's seated 
and a little bit of pressure is placed on each side, it still stays in. He also opted to go without the clip on the, the little holster here. So it's just a simple matter of, um, if you need it fast, you can grab onto it. If you need a little help, you can grab on there. Grab the magazine, bite down on the end there, pull the magazine out, drop the mag in the gun, and pop in your new magazine. So that's it. We're going to get a few more coats of oil in it as it's continued to dry out we're going to potentially get here within another week as these uh, continue to um, work their way loose and uh, get more seated into the leather we'll get some washers on here to make sure that this that these stay really nice and tight um, maybe some Loctite, and that's it. So thank you for watching. This has been Philip Brooks from Backwoods Brooks Knives, signing off.